Hi, welcome back to the edit room. Today we're going to look at the Uber proxy workflow in Final Cut Pro 10. And I want to give a big thank you to Sam Woodall and Ben King for going through all the trials and tribulations to figure this out. Essentially what it is, is if you have a Final Cut library, and let's say you want to send it to another editor over the web, but you don't want to send the original media because you might be dealing with 4K footage and it'd be too large to send over the web. And you only want to include the proxy workflow. But the Uber proxy means that you can create smaller file sizes of the proxy files. And we're going to do that using Compressor. Now Sam and Ben did create a white paper on this and I'll include a link to that in the notes. However, they did miss something and I hope that they change it after they watch this video. So what is the purpose? Uh, one purpose could be sending projects over the web, like I said, to a, another editor and you just want them to do a quick edit or you know, even just favorite good shots and what have you. Um, you could also add burned in information like time code or watermarks. And if you want to do remote editing, maybe you want to edit on the plane um, very quickly and easily because you're going to have better performance. Now, if you're editing on a Mac Mini, this is definitely for you. Um, so the proxy workflow in Final Cut generates these file sizes. The Uber proxy means you can have a smaller file size, like I said. Now, you can't change the codec of the proxy files, which is what Sam and Ben found out. You can only change the frame size to make those file sizes much smaller. Now, in order for this to work, the proxy files first need to be generated in the Manage Library. And if you're importing footage, don't generate proxies upon import if leaving files in place. Make sure to set the storage location back to In Library, then create the proxies. You have to create proxies first so the Final Cut knows that they're there. There are three compressor settings that you need to know. First, they have to have the same pixel aspect ratio. So these are some examples that should work. I've only tested the first two. Now, the audio settings must remain untouched. Make sure to check copy audio tracks from source, and file names and frame count must be the same as the original as well. Now, some things to note about the travel library. Because we're leaving the original media outside of the library that we're sending, still images will need to be relinked. Your other editors won't see those still images. And motion generators, of course, need to be installed in the exact folders from the first computer in order for the Final Cut library to see it. So let's take a look at our library back in Final Cut. So this is the library I have. I have some uh, video files here and this is uh, 1920 by 1080 or HD and then this uh, file is uh, not HD but it is 4k and I also have some still images just to show you what happens here now uh, back in the finder I've got my internal proxy workflow that's a folder that is on my Macintosh HD and then I have my external proxy workflow. It's a folder on my external hard drive. And this is the library that we're looking at here. And so what we're going to do is send this library over to the other editor, and then we're going to eject this drive to make sure it works. And just so, so you know, I'm going to right click on this and show package contents. And the proxy workflow, that is the name of my event here. And then inside of that event is the original media. Those are all the clips I just pointed out. And then the transcoded media, proxy media. I've already transcoded them. And if you haven't transcoded them yet, what you need to do is select them and right click and say transcode media. Don't optimize the media for this instance. But notice how the create proxy media is grayed out. It's because I already have it created. So let me cancel that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take these files here, and they are already smaller, so it's going to be a quicker transcode to make them even smaller than what they are right now. So back in Compressor, I have went to a ProRes setting. I went to ProRes Proxy, 
and I right clicked on it and I just duplicated it and then I renamed it Uber. So with this selected I'm going to go over here to the video tab and I want the frame size to be constrained and I want to make sure it's 16 by 9 and I'm going to type in let's see what did I use over here 480 by 270 and then the pixel aspect ratio is default frame size field order same as source uh, padding preserve source aspect ratio I've also added effect of a text overlay and I've named it uber proxy HD so that's going to actually create text burned into the video. Now you could also put um, time code or a watermark if you had, but for instance, I'm just going to do a text overlay. And then the audio, you want to make sure to check copy audio tracks from source. So I'm going to go to the proxy media and I'm just going to drag that in. And now that I have them all selected, I'm just going to drag in what I created here and drop it in. And it applies it to all of them. And it's going to put in the source folder, which I don't want to do that. Not yet, anyway. Because I don't want to have to sort through hundreds of files. So I'm going to select them all and then just right click on it and choose Location, Other. And I want to put them in my new proxies folder choose and I'll start the batch now if you um, since we're in active right here see how it says elapsed timed if you just tap on that or click on it it goes to remaining so it lets you know how much time is remaining um, one other thing that you could do is create a droplet from this so I'm gonna um, right click on this and say save as droplet and that's fine. I, I like that name and I'll save the droplet, you know, maybe here. And the location is going to be the source, but we can change that. Remember, it's important not to do that. We want to change where the location of the newly created proxy files are going to be. And you can do that with the droplet. Now, the way that I use the droplet is I just drag and I put it into my dock so I have quick access to it. And then what you could do is just drag those files in and drop it right on top of the droplet. And here's the droplet window where you can change the location to be the exact folder that you want it to put in. And then you would just click Start Batch and it does the exact same thing. Only you don't have to open Compressor to use it. Let me quit the droplet. Now back in Final Cut, I want to make sure that my original media is outside of the library. So I'm going to select the library here and I want to modify my settings and so instead of having the media in the library I'm going to choose my media folder here and this is my external hard drive I'll choose the media and same with the cache just to keep the library file size smaller I'll choose media and the funnel cut backups that's fine you could store that wherever you want and I'm going to go ahead and include the cache and then I'll hit consolidate and I do not want to consolidate the proxy media so I'm just going to leave that off because I do not want to create sim links so I'll click OK now back in the finder you can see in my media I now have the Funnel Cut original media and all of the folders of the dates that they were created and this is the original QuickTime movies and now um, I have my new proxies that I created and something that Compressor or at least I could not figure out Compressor to do is to remove this name that it put of the setting for that clip and because it has that name on it Final Cut will not see it as something that it thought it created so we have to change those names I don't want to go in there and you know, change each one, especially in larger libraries where I have hundreds of files. So what I did is I created an automator workflow. And it's actually a, uh, 
you know, when you go to file a new and automator, I actually created an application. And then I just typed in rename, rename finder items, and I drag that in. And it's asking me, do you want to add the, the uh, copy the finder items? And I do not want to copy them because that would be really bad for video. <laughs> So I say don't add, I don't want to change this to replace text. And as you can see, I just copied and pasted right from um, the finder, basically. Uh, let's go back to the finder. I don't want that dash and anything after that up to the dot. So I'm finding that, and it's just in the base name only, ignoring the case. And I want to replace it with nothing. <laughs> okay. And then I save this. And then I dragged it down to my dock again. There's my rename proxy application. And then I'm going to drag all of these new proxy files and drop it, just like I did the droplet, onto that automator application. And boom. It renames them for me perfectly and quickly. Okay, so now back in the show package contents, I'm going to go to the event, transcoded media, proxy media, and let me get this other folder opened up here. I'm going to go ahead and just move these proxy files to the old proxy folder, and then the new proxy files into the this folder. And now back in Final Cut, I'll switch to the proxy view under the view menu of proxy. And there's my burn-in Uber Proxy HD. And you can see it's much, much smaller in, in the um, resolution. The resolution is not good at all, but it's good enough to edit with. So then the next step would be, let me quit this. And get info, command I. Notice it went from a gig to almost 155 megabytes because I moved the original video footage outside of it and the proxy media is inside this library. So I'm going to just copy this library by dragging it to my internal drive. And now that it's there, I'm going to come down here and eject the Sandman. Before I do, though, I'm going to quit Automator. I don't want to save that one. I'm going to quit Compressor. And we'll eject that drive. Now we'll open up this library. And of course, I have to reset the cache in the library. And we'll just choose my internal drive, my internal media drive, same for this one, and click OK. And as you can see, the still images are offline because they're not linking to that drive. And you can see the burn-in code there. And if I switch to the original or optimized, it's offline as well, which is exactly what I wanted. I hope this helps. If you want to learn more, please visit johnblue.com, and I'll see you next time in the edit room.